but Emmanuel Ugba joins us. Emmanuel, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, Rob. How you doing? I'm doing good. Last time I saw you, I think was uh, was homecoming, right? Yes, sir. It was homecoming during the season last year. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, and you know you had the injury, but before the injury, you were off to a fantastic start. Had five and a half sacks, uh, twenty three solo tackles. You'd forced a fumble. You were, you know, were playing for that Chiefs defense, and they were off to a great start. And um, I know it's always tough. Everybody I've ever talked to says when you get hurt in the NFL, you kind of, you know, you kind of lose touch a little bit with the team because uh, you're not practicing and all that every day. But uh, how exciting was it for you, even though you were you were injured, to be with? You know, you're gonna you got a Super Bowl ring. Have you got it yet? Oh no, nah, we haven't got it. yet. I think we get that uh, in the fall, I believe. Okay. Or late summer. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, but. How exciting was that for you? Uh, it was definitely exciting, you know, even though I didn't get to play. But, you know, being in there, you know, in the atmosphere, it was amazing. And it's just something you dream about as a little kid. But, yeah, it was it was a, an amazing experience. Like I said, even though I didn't get to play, but I know my brothers, they, out there, they went out there and did their thing, did their, did their thing and brought me a championship. So I'm grateful for that, you know, just to experience it. Well, and, and I know it's hard to think about, but there's no doubt the way you played before you got hurt in setting yeah. the tone for that defense, uh, yeah. I hope I hope you feel like you played a big part of it because I think you did. Yeah, I mean, you know, when people say, yeah, you were part of the reason why we were here and all that. Yeah, I, I get that, but, you know, just that competitive spirit in me, you know, just being one to go out there and actually play. Know myself, but I'm. I mean, I'm grateful for the experience. You know, now I'm in Miami. I get a chance to do that. We have a good team coming up, so you know, I can't wait to see who we get in the draft. Yeah. Now, are you are you in Miami now? Yes, I'm currently in Miami. Okay. All right. Where yeah. Where'd you find a place? Where'd you find a place to live? Because there's a lot of places down there in Miami. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm still looking right now uh, okay. for places to live. But I come here every year, so this is like my second home. So it's kind of a smooth transition for me. And right now, I just got to find a, a spot, you know, when all this stuff settles down. And I'm just giving it some time right now. Are you a, are, are you a guy that, I mean, you grew up in, in Houston, uh, yeah. came to Oklahoma State from, from Houston. But are you a guy that likes the water, likes the ocean? I mean, is that is that why you've uh, kind of migrated to, to Miami? <laughs> I mean, I love the water, but... But then again, the reason why I came here because I train here every year, so this is like my off season at home. Right. So just coming here was kind of just felt normal since I trained down here. My trainers down here, so I just okay. felt like, yeah, the why switch it up. Is that where you went to train uh, after Oklahoma State before the draft? Yes, I've been training here in the same place ever since. Okay. Okay. So that there's that there's that connection. Let's go back yeah. to, to that real quick, and we'll move forward. Uh, you remember what this was like. It, it, and most guys I talk to say they only wanted to go through the draft once. It's, it's a, it's a oh, nerve-wracking yeah. experience. You're being judged at the nth degree. You realize that you don't have any control over where you're going to end up. Uh, that that yeah. Most guys don't really like the draft process. Oh, yeah, the draft process is very, very stressful. You know, a bunch of teams telling you what you want to hear. And, um, you know, it's just it's just a stressful time. And, yeah, I was just hoping just to get it over with. But, yeah, but I, I had fun, you know, being around my family and having my name called. That was definitely a blessing for me. But, yeah, the whole draft process was definitely very stressful. And, yeah, that's that's the one thing you just want to go through just once. No, and, and and you have you 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 went to Cleveland. Uh, yeah. I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of you know a lot of guys uh, kind of you know look look for exit after Cleveland. Uh, it <laughs> seems that way. Although you know the the media wants you to think Cleveland's making a comeback. They want yeah. you to think they were going to the Super Bowl last year, and and no, you were on the you were on the Super Bowl team. Um, yeah. But. Uh, how were the years in Cleveland? Sum them up in 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 a couple of sentences. Um, it was it was 
I wouldn't say it was totally bad. Yeah, going 0 and 16 was terrible, but I actually had a good time, I guess, because of the fans. You know, we still had fans showing up to games. They loved us. You know, we kept giving it our all. But yeah, it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle in Cleveland. But you know, then I got a chance to be able to get traded to Kansas City, and um, and and I actually I needed that for my career, my career boost. So. You know, I'm grateful for everything that happened. You know, I feel like Cleveland was kind of a lesson. You know, you learn something from there, and then you learn. Then you come to uh, Kansas City, you learn how to win, and now you're in Miami. You got to bring that winning culture from Kansas City to Miami. Now, now one of one of the things about Kansas City, and I think you and I talked about it at homecoming last year. If you like the college atmosphere. Kansas yeah. City is a lot like playing for a college team in the NFL because the fans there, a lot of them cheer like college fans. They look at their team like a college team. There's that yeah. – that, I know there's a passion in, in the NFL. I mean, all you got to do is look at places like Dallas and Pittsburgh and, and places like that. But uh, Kansas City, uh, kind of college atmosphere. You agree? Yeah, it's just like, you know, just like we have Orange Friday, they have Red Friday over there. So, you know, everybody's decked out in Kansas City Chiefs uh, red on Friday. So it's definitely like a, it feels like a college atmosphere, but, you know, all the fans are real close. You know, they love their team so much over there, and they they respect us, you know. But, yeah, it's, it's, it was definitely a cool experience, you know, playing for them, even though it was just a one-year thing for me. But I had a great time playing for that fan, that organization, so. Now, now Miami, and uh, again, it's one of those, you know, for everybody knows the Miami Dolphins. They, you know, they're the the only team to go through unbeaten way back when, and and it's a it's a franchise that, like I said, is is well known. Um, yeah. And you just made a key statement. One of the reasons the Dolphins probably signed you, obviously, they know you can play. Your numbers are excellent, yeah. and you know, but. They know you just came from Kansas City, so you feel like a Super Bowl champion. You got to teach those other guys in that locker room how that feels. Yes, sir. That's why I'm excited. One of the reasons I'm I'm very excited to come out here because I know we're going to be a young team. First of all, I got to watch this draft and see what they're going to do, who we're going to get in the draft, and I'm just excited, you know, to bring that winning culture over. You know, I thought a lot. I learned a lot in Kansas City. That I'm. I'm a vet now, so they're actually depending on me, you know, to show the younger guys, you know, what it takes to be a winner. So. You, you brought up the draft. I was going to ask you about your coaching staff because the, the, you know, the, the head coach was part of the New England dynasty, so he knows a little bit about winning. But if you want and you know, we'll keep it a secret. Who who are the Dolphins picking? <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> I'm just like just like everybody else, just waiting to see that name call. I don't know. Supposedly I'm here and we we might trade up or or whatever. I don't know what's going on. I'm just just like the fan. I'm just sitting down, just waiting to see who we're getting. So, yeah, I, I know you you remember Benny Tonga at, at Oklahoma State. Yeah, I remember Benny. Yeah, yeah, Benny. Yeah. Benny's good friends with the uh, the the Tonga Valoas, uh, so he knows too. Uh, Tua came to camp one year at Oklahoma State. So, uh, he did? Wow. I, yeah, he came to summer camp. He was, they recruited him as a quarterback. Of course, you know, he ended up going where his brother went to Alabama. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, he, he, uh, uh, he was, uh, yeah, he, he came to Oklahoma State and his little brother, uh, who's at Alabama right now came to Oklahoma State. Uh, Benny knows that family really good. So, now, again, like I said, Oklahoma State didn't end up with him. but yeah. um, So, I, I, Tua, Justin Justin Herbert, I mean, we're hearing a little bit of both. But I yeah. wanted to ask you about your head coach. This is, a, this is a guy that's a defensive coach, which tells me uh, the Dolphins are going to pride themselves on being a good defensive team. And that hadn't always been the case, but I think that's the emphasis. Yeah, I mean, this would be my first time having a defensive coach, so I'm excited. I've never had that in my career. I've always had offensive coaches. I mean, I had one year in Cleveland when our uh, defensive coordinator was the head coach, was the intern head coach. But, um, yeah, this is going to be like my first actual full defensive head coach. So I, I can't wait to see 
what he wants to do. I know there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the, being a great defense, and I can't wait, you know, to, just to do my part, you know, and bring the best out of the guys around me. So. Yeah, going through this, and I mean, I think it's weird for everybody. I'm doing my show at, at home in my office in Edmond. I haven't been up to Stillwater in three weeks. That's probably the longest. That's probably the longest I've gone in, in maybe since I was in college. Uh, before I got to college, that I, you know, longest I've been away and not been in Stillwater at least, you know, recently. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's been like, but the most important question here is, how is your family doing? How have you been doing with this? And uh, like all athletes, what have you been doing to keep, you know, working out? Is your training center open and you're able to do that? So, um, yeah, so my training center was closed for a little bit. So I found a trainer, which I would just uh, get some work done with just by two or three guys. Just We just go out on the field and just get some, like, football work done or, like, speed work done. And then the Dolphins actually sent me some um, at-home equipment, like portable bench and, like, some weights and all that that I could set up at my backyard so I could use that, you know, just to get my strength strength in and, and I just go out to run and do my football just for conditioning. But, yeah, my family, they're doing good. You know, they're all in Houston, um, you know, going through it, trying to stay inside as much as possible. Uh, just just everybody just trying to stay safe, you know. That's that's the big emphasis right now, you know, staying safe. Yeah. I, I got to tell you this story because I think you'd like it. Uh, Mike Gundy, uh, I, I, I went up to the, the coach at the end of uh, the uh, off-season conditioning. In fact, it was the last – it was the championship day for uh, competition day, which I always yeah. – I love watching. I mean, that to me, that was one of the most fun things about off season, was the competition yeah. day stuff. In fact, did, didn't your team win it one year? Oh, yeah, we won. We had a uh, – we had a uh, – it was me. Was it me and KP? It was me and K, KP that were captain. Okay. And yeah, we won. We won off for sure. My last year, we won it. I thought I remembered that. Anyway, so I'm out there watching, and there's a young defensive end that, that redshirted last year uh, from Colleyville, Texas, Israel Isman Hunley. And uh, I, I look over, and I see this guy, and I, I, I asked Coach Gundy, I said, who in the heck is that? And he goes, that's Israel Isman Hunley. And uh, I said, he doesn't look anything like he did when he showed up. He's like now almost 250, and, I mean, he 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 looks – the part and the mm-hmm. first thing Mike when I turned to Mike I said boy he's really come on Mike goes he's just like Emmanuel was Emmanuel came in and I mean he took to the to the weight room he took to the training table and the next thing you know we turned around and Emmanuel had changed his body looked completely different so you got a mini you got a mini me on the team this year <laughs> that you may want to keep an eye on because everybody's yeah. comparing uh, Issam and Hunley to uh to Emmanuel. Yeah, I mean that's like that, that's that glass workout. So the glass workout, you know, that stuff changes you. You just gotta have that mindset coming in. You wanna be the best. So I hope he has that mindset. It sounds like he has that mindset. Um yeah, I'll definitely be watching him closely, you know, just to, to see see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll better. give you just just so you can remember, I I'm gonna look it up here. I'm gonna give you his not I think he wears forty seven. But I mean, like last year, I mean, he played he played in one game, uh, yeah. in that McNeese game. Uh, but yeah, let me give you that number before we let you go, and you can keep an eye on him because everybody is saying, "Yeah, he's he's just like uh, Emmanuel. He's he's coming on." Uh, let's see, where is no thirty seven? He wears thirty seven, oh, which is an unusual <laughs> number for a defensive end. But uh, that's what they said about me too. So. <laughs> that, that, that's right that's right yeah. so see that's that's perfect but yeah. uh <laughs> hey man it, it's good to talk to you i hope uh things you know uh get better here where you can get back into the facility and start getting used to your new team and your new teammates and uh yeah, i agree miami's a great place to hang out man it's it's beautiful down there so um and i uh, hopefully your schedule will align where we can see you in stillwater for a game next year Yes, sir. Hopefully, hopefully around the same time around homecoming because I'll be sure to come, you know, say hello, you know, during the game. But, yeah, just thank you and um, hope for the best. You know, hope this thing just clears up quickly. You know, 
Well, Watching this hey, stuff go. Hey, uh, we love it. We love it when guys stay attached, and you've certainly done that. So best of luck to you with Miami. We'll keep an eye on you, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you sometime this fall. But uh, best of luck, Emmanuel. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate you for All having right. me. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. Emmanuel Ogba.